the United States, a dynamic nation of spectacular growth, a nation of achievers, a nation of leadership, of innovation and invention, a nation on the move. It's a demanding nation, discriminating buyers who have ever-broadening needs, a huge power plant for a mushrooming tri-state area, a sophisticated electronics panel to advance the race into space, controls to govern the machinery of a vast industrial complex, an air warning defense system, appliances for the homemaker, house wiring for a new all-electric development. Much of this material came through a gray bar building such as this, typical of those which dot the nation. Its movement resulted from the action of gray bar people and the customers they serve. The telephone plays an important part in the day-to-day -day business of this marketing and distribution giant. Much of the goods that move to the ultimate user from Graybar, the nation's largest independent electrical distributor, begin their journey via the telephone. In fact, invention of the telephone, but more specifically, the telegraph, led to Graybar's beginning following the war between the states. This was a time of great upheaval, a time when the aftermath of a bitter struggle was being felt, when the country was flexing its muscles for expansion, a time when the great Western migrations began. It also was a time when the nation's industrial structure was burgeoning. Men with ideas, with confidence in their country's future, were making plans to play an active role in America's growth. Two such men were Gray and Barton. Elisha Gray was a 34-year-old Oberlin College professor. Enos Barton, a 27-year-old telegrapher. Gray designed telegraph instruments in his spare time. Barton was interested in the manufacture and sale of these instruments. They joined forces in 1869 with an investment of $2,500 each. From this shop in Cleveland, Ohio, where they manufactured telegraph keys and relays, bells and buzzers, fire and burglar alarm systems, a giant has grown. Gray bar. A hundred years have passed, the first hundred years, and in many ways, they lived up to the old cliche, the first hundred years are the hardest. They were years of struggle and rapid change, of keeping up with, even ahead of, a fast-paced economy. Years of exercising a leadership role in the development of the electrical industry. A lot of people call this map of the United States the gray bar map. It shows how gray bar distribution blankets the nation with locations in every major marketing area. If you put all of the gray bar buildings into one continuous structure, it would measure one story high, 100 feet wide, and 10 miles long. But more important than buildings are the people who man them, knowledgeable people equipped to expertly handle almost any problem relating to electrical products, their installation and use. People like this specialist in lighting. There are several specialists in every gray bar district. They handle the products of hundreds of manufacturers. Quality products which fall into such categories as electronics, power apparatus, construction, communication, appliances, over 100,000 individual items. Specialists or line managers go into the field to give the customer the technical assistance he requires. They also train gray bar sales and inside personnel regarding products in their lines. Once a customer's needs are defined, a quotation must be given, and when accepted, the order processed by people familiar with descriptions, prices, and products. Gray bar people all over the country process more than 23,000 orders every day.
In the warehouse, too, where massive inventories are maintained, customer service depends upon the know-how and experience of Gray Bar employee owners who must select for speedy delivery a multitude of products with a variety of uses. Expertise at the city counter also is highly essential. It's a busy place where busy people, contractors, maintenance men, dealers, must receive rapid service and advice for their urgent needs, and Gray Bar's employee owners always are eager to please. Their business is to give the customer better service, to see that he gets exactly what he wants when he needs it, and with the least amount of fuss. The job can be a demanding one, for all kinds of customers must be satisfied. From utilities to contractors, telephone companies to industrials, TV stations to TV dealers, and somehow the challenge is always successfully met. This is how Gray Bar has grown, by meeting challenges and serving its customers well. Challenges have been faced successfully, not only in peace, but in our nation's defense and wartime efforts, when Gray Bar people's intimate knowledge of industry sources and products enabled them to fill urgent needs. From the Cleveland beginnings, demands for Gray and Barton's products and services forced a move to Chicago. At the close of 1869, these were the company's quarters. The following April, the employee roster had grown to 100, almost half of whom are shown here. Many of these men were leaders in building the Western Electric Manufacturing Company. This new name was officially adopted in 1872, after Gray and Barton had broadened the scope of their business, and it no longer was a small partnership. Invention by Bell of the Telephone in 1875, and Edison of the incandescent lamp in 1879, had tremendous effect on company growth. Western Electric was licensed to manufacture telephones for the entire Bell system. And as everyone knows, Edison's lamp really was the beginning of the electrical industry. The most significant event in the company's history, however, and one of the milestones of American capitalism, was its purchase by the employees in January 1929. It was a pioneering move which startled the business world and set standards for future generations. But none ever would be of the magnitude of this. When Gray Bar's first president, Albert L. Salt, presented a check for $3 million to Western Electric's president for the purchase of the common stock of the company. It represented the confidence of employees in their company, which only recently had been renamed using a contraction of the names of its original founders, Gray and Barton. Western Electric retained $6 million in preferred stock. This, the balance of the purchase price, was paid off over a period of time. The confidence of early Gray Bar employee owners has been justified. Their company weathered the stock market crash of 1929 and the years of depression that followed. Steered a safe course through World War II and Korea, and in the post-war period, continued to push sales over the $600 million level. As Graybar's distribution network expanded, the character of its business changed. From catering principally to telephone companies and large electric power companies, it became the distributor of everything electrical, from electricians' hand tools to electrical appliances for the housewife. With employee ownership came a whole new viewpoint. Employee welfare, satisfaction, and progress were management's primary concern. The company became one of dedicated people, a company with a great future. Pioneer benefit programs were instituted, which today assure Gray Bar employees the opportunity for security, personal growth, and a share in the profits which they help to create. Gray Bar's management is homegrown, they are up from the ranks people, aware of employee needs and aspirations. They have shared the experience of starting at the bottom. Perhaps this tells the story better than anything. It is true of all Gray Bar management. 
Men like Frank Ketchum, who followed Albert Salt and was president when the final payment of $1 million on the preferred stock was made in 1941, giving employee owners full possession of their company. Since 1941, common stock has been made available from time to time for purchase by the employees on extended terms. Under Alfred Nickel, employee benefit plans were expanded to increase accident and sickness benefits. His successor as president, Willard Hengies, began his career in the warehouse at $5 a week. He saw to it that a new, more liberal profit-sharing plan was instituted. John Rain, whose first job with Graybar also was warehouseman. During his tenure, pension payments were liberalized to bring them into line with the accelerating cost of living. These men, and men just like them, typify Gray Bar Management's concern for keeping company benefits better, more liberal, more advanced, and more up-to-date. Programs devised by employee owner management have created a happier, more enthusiastic, more interested employee. People like Jim Muller, with Gray Bar almost five years, it's easy for me to be enthusiastic about Graybar. The company has given me training and uh, opportunity. I also receive a Christmas bonus. I uh, have various types of insurance protection, and I share in the profits also. I particularly like this plan of being an employee What's owner, it? and therefore, every time I do something extra for the company, I know I'm doing it also for myself. Len Coffey, who typifies Graybar's professional selling organization. Salesmen who sell big ticket items and big installations. Len has been a big earner both for Gray Bar and himself during his working lifetime. To him, the liberal programs devised for employee owners mean a happy retirement in the not too distant future. I can do the things I always wanted to do and no worries. Incidentally, his retirement annuity will cost the company $51,000. Employee ownership and the benefits it has produced creates a greater pride in accomplishment, a desire to do things better, something rare these days. And it's all because in serving customers and suppliers well, the Gray Bar employee is serving himself. After all, it is his company. As you have seen, Gray Bar is a company which does many things for many people, anticipates customer needs, assembles and stocks a varied backup supply of merchandise to answer them, extends credit, provides technical help, and delivers the goods. To the supplier, Graybar offers the quickest way to penetrate the market. It provides marketing know-how, a ready-made field organization, the core of which is a well-trained, highly skilled force of salesmen professionals capable of selling at top industry levels. It also offers the supplier a large available list of customers. Because of the way Gray Bar functions, the supplier's physical distribution costs and capital requirements are reduced. His accounting and credit problems simplified. The first hundred years mark only the beginning for a vital company with proud achievements in a healthy, growing industry. Nationally, Gray Bar is a business giant, yet it is also a small business run by neighborly people, people who not only operate their own business, but participate in and support community activities. As such, it has a capacity for future growth. This expanding nation of ours is creating an increasing consumption and production of electricity the vital needs of industry, government, and education must be served. And Gray Bar's employee owners will serve them well with the same dedication and enthusiasm in the next 100 years.